Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not? Hi guys. So, I have an interview today. If you have not heard about the hay campaign, um, you may have been living under a rock or you mightn't be involved with horses or agriculture in general. But basically, it's a mental health um, awareness initiative and I'm going to talk to the mastermind behind it, Shane Rooney, today. So, guys, I hope you enjoy this and remember, don't forget to say to any of your friends today, hey, how are you? Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. I have a guest for you today. So you may have heard of the Hay Campaign. If you haven't, you need to check it out, especially if you're equestrian. But I actually have the mastermind behind it with me today. So this is Shane. (laughs) And we're going to talk all about how he came up with it, how it just basically exploded in the last month. And yeah, pretty much all that. So welcome to the podcast, Shane. How are you? Oh, look at not too bad. I like the I like what I did there. How are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I think I think anyone that's been reading the grassroots gazette for the last month is just it's 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 coming sort of second nature to them now. Like just it's it's the way everyone introduced. I like, see Shane Shane McCarthy has gone from hello everybody to hey how are you? <laughs> <laughs> so look at it's um it's great to be talking to you and it's 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 great to be. I suppose starting to focus now, changing it from going from, say like a January a, a January campaign into a year year long campaign. Um, mm. so yeah, no, it's it it's it 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 really just started sinking in. Um, really started sinking in there past couple of days, but um, no, we're. We're going to make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So just to get started, right, for anyone who may not know what it is, if they're living under a rock, like per se, um, yeah. what is the hay campaign? Well, look, at the hay campaign is basically a mental health, a positive mental health campaign that I launched on the start of January. Uh, the idea came about on the 27th or 28th of December. So it was very much lastminute.com. But... <laughs> Oh, look at like the the original plan was to create a campaign to raise awareness about opening up about mental health. Yeah. And the easiest way I thought about doing it was to reach out to friends and family, like not necessarily every day or whatever like that. Like if it, if it was a case that like, say, if you set it out, set it out to like uh, every fr- every friday for the month of Jan- for the month of january or every saturday like one person a week like once you trust them and once you trust that they'll listen and understand well try to understand anyway what what you're going to um is is basically the 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 original idea that came came about the campaign but Jesus, like, if I realized like how big this was going to get in such a short space of time, like, I, I'd have probably, <laughs> I'd have done it years ago. Um, <laughs> honest to God, like, it was absolutely it. Now look, at, it took a couple of days to really sink in with people. Like, people were looking like the hay campaign is like, oh, there, there, there's a shortage of hay and all this <laughs> crack, like, do you know? And next thing when people started seeing the videos and started looking deeper into it, they realized that, right. It, the hay, the hay part is, is irrelevant as such. Like it's just a means of how to, I suppose, connect equestrians and the agricultural community together right. to be able to realize like that there is a problem with mental health in both sectors. Mm. Um. Yeah. So like the hay, obviously it's a, like an abbreviation or whatever i can't remember the exact term for it but it stands for yeah. hey like so, yeah. so it stands for how are you so asking yeah. someone how they are and i think it is really good the way you put that in you tied it in with hey because like if you're it, involved with horses if you're involved with agriculture you can't get away from the feckin' stuff can no, you no and it's it's one of the most recognizable things in any yard whether it's agriculture whether it's show jumping whether it's race and breeding dressage event and like, like every one of them has at least a bale of hay or a bale of haylage or something along the lines like that tucked away into the yard somewhere 
But the problem was that even though it's like the hay part was so recognizable, the one thing that wasn't recognizable was that the problem in the problem in the community is like with mental health. Um yeah. And the stigma behind opening up about the problems is is one of the major major concerns. Like people were, it was almost like a taboo thing. Like like I I'd see it myself. Like if people that I sort of knew would say walk into like a social gathering or like a pub at the weekend or something like that. Like and it just didn't seem themselves. Hmm. Like people's first reaction would be like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with that lad? Or what what's why is he so sour today? Like. Instead of thinking, right, he doesn't see himself, I might, might just ask him and check in on him and see how he is or she is. Not mm. necessarily just men, but like I, I say, I, I say he he is like... Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's just, yeah. but like for for men in particular, like it's so, it, it's seen as a sign of weak, weakness like, and like even like, even like when I when I was going through sort of hard times, like it, whether it was school or college or anything like that, like you'd be sort of looked at and you'd, you'd be sort of told to, uh, just will you ever get over yourself or will you ever, you know, like get up and move on and all this sort of crack, like, but like there's nothing wrong. Like Brendan Murphy put it absolutely brilliant there one day, um, saying that it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. And yeah. that's, that's one of, that's that's something that's that's stuck with me and is going to I suppose stick with me for, for a very, very long time going about this and going about to promote this as best we can. That like it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. And that's really good like, way, it? it it really is. And like even like there's been so many writers that from the grassroots gazette that have come together and like come up with these little quotes and different things like that, like and every single one of them, you'd you'd always sort of, you know, you'd you'd sort of pick pick bits and pieces out of them, and to be able to go and say right, okay, well, we have the baseline here to be able to come up with a really really good campaign. And look look at it. I I said at the start of January, I said the first the first thing I said is we're going to take over the world with hey. I never thought it was going to be possible, but <laughs> we pretty much did like in terms of the equine communities worldwide that the fact that we've created history with all governing bodies from Ireland coming together mm. uh, for the first time ever to support this mental health mental health week um, I never thought that well I was hoping that we might get a race sponsored in our name I, it was one of the <laughs> first ideas I pitched to Shane McCarthy uh, being truthful here and Shane won't mind me saying this but he says nah not a chance he says way too much plan for one like little moment like is it, it's something that we need to focus on at a later date and uh, next and boom Peter Rowe comes in contact Shane McCarthy we want to sponsor a race in the campaign's name <laughs> but hey, like, yeah. like oh look at Chrissy like That's every crazy. single day and like I, I, I genuinely mean it when I say like the whole impact of this campaign really sort of just sunk in after January passed because every single day there was something new and every yeah. like whether it was a video or whether it was a text and or whether it was just someone saying thanks for you know coming up with a campaign that's after helping them massively mm -hmm. um like every small little thing that's been done over the past month is is really after sort of hitting home there now and it, it just it, it's not it, it, I wouldn't say look at it it's put me put me sort of back but it's sort of driven me forward to be able to pursue this now and to really drive forward and to make make the the equine sector and the agricultural se sector a much better place much better place yeah. um like I I would I would definitely love to have the ag sector tied into it some way share or form whether we do like a team month for people in agriculture as well um could you get something fact... sponsored at the national Playing championships yeah and and so something like that even even if we got like a stand or something like that like and yeah. held a few podcast episodes with say some like i know finn walsh he'd be one of the main um 
he'd be one of the main influence, influencers in the agricultural sector and he's all about the hay campaign like he even he even advertised it on his own <laughs> his own tiktok page really? and like yeah like that that went out to i think 125,000 people mm-hmm. Like that's that's how many subscribe to his channel, but like there's millions watching watching his videos every single day, and like to see something like that from someone so influential in the agricultural sector, I was like, yeah, I was like, and like I know the Grassroots Gazette and everything else like that. It's all it's all equine sort of based, but like the real the reality is like the majority of equines in in Ireland like would have their toe dipped in some some sort of agriculture as well like you know it's just one of those things but um yeah like it's 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 just really after taking off and it's just it, like all these thoughts are all just starting to come in now and it's just like right okay we need to do this we need to do that and Shane McCarthy's still sort of trying to pull back in the reins and tell me to slow down but I was like no it's not like him <laughs> well look at he, he he's he's more see I, I suppose I come up with these plans but with no real uh, organisation or structure to them oh, so, yeah. <laughs> and he's like no he says we have a bunch of chaos there he says <laughs> you need to go back now and plan this properly he says so yeah like that's just um, that's just the way it is but like we are we are really trying to drive forward now with this and we're very lucky with the likes of Colin Clark and Brendan Murphy as well the two of them are 100% behind the campaign as well and we are really driving it forward um, to to push for a better a, a better place uh, in the agri- or the, the equine and agricultural industries where did the idea come from initially? oh, oh very dark and lonely places Chrissy <laughs> <laughs> uh, look I where no tool is another one that came up with like a couple of these slogans that I was talking about, and she was just like instead of like saying it's a bad day or a bad week, it's it's just a week or something like that. Yeah. Like, I I was just having a few days where I just wasn't myself. Like I was, it it's 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 a long story, and it was like. It was an awful lot of it was fueled by drink, but like it was all, it all sort of came about on the night of Stevens's night, and a few days after, like a couple of words were said to me that were completely untrue, and like just because they took a dislike to the industry that I'm in, um, as opposed to who I am as a person, you know, it was one yeah, of those, one of those things, and but that yeah. means you have to factor into racing, yeah. Yeah, right. that's that's, that's nice. exactly it. That's exactly it. And the breeding aspect of it as well, like like we have our own mare at home there, like that's like and we had another mare before it, like, but um she unfortunately died there a couple of years ago from colic. And uh Paul to to be open and honest about it, like it was basically accused of sending that that poor mare to, to France for meat. Um like. that uh yeah, and and like I bought I bought that mare on the back of losing a, a very very good friend of mine called Grant Mannion, um, and it was my coping mechanism to be able to, you know, not move on or get over, but to get through the hard times. Yeah, and like when I lost when I lost Cheerio Sweetie, oh Jesus Christ, I was I was a full three months before I was back normal again if there ever if there ever is such a thing but like I really I really took that hard and I really blame myself for like I, I know there was nothing I could do about it but like it was just the way I was wired I was blaming myself an awful lot for like how she went like she was still a young mare and she was like she was absolutely like it, to look at her like she was you nearly swear she cost a hundred grand yeah, like she was stunning, absolutely stunning, and she had such a heart of gold. Um, but like, even even to hear something like that, like and like this came from, like great like great family friends through the years, like and 
it was just more so fucking drink infused and like do you know it was yeah. like it was it, it, it just sort of not that it not that it completely knocked me but it did take me back especially from the people that I was hearing it from um, yeah. like I thought I, I definitely think that I I present myself in a great way and a great way about looking after my horses and you know keeping them keeping them as happy and as well as I possibly can but like mm-hmm. to hear something like that then on the back of it all like it was just one of those oh fucking hell I can't ever fucking win in these situations like yeah. and I just felt lonely and I just felt like it was me against the world and mm. I says right. I need to look. I, I, I it took it came into my head, and I don't know how it came into my head, but I looked up, like I looked up the statistics for, like, mental health issues in say like the racing industry. Yeah. I maybe it was just for consolation to see if I was the only one or not. <laughs> that that was probably it. Um, and yeah, I was shocked like 80% of professional jockeys um, that took this particular survey, I think there was 56 in total, uh, mm-hmm. suffer from at least one diagnosis with mental health disorder. And um, that was fucking eye-opening. And like that, that, that shook me more than what was said in the pub that night. Yeah. Um, so I said, right, this is more than, this this is about more than me now. This is this is about a whole industry, and mm-hmm. I could only imagine. Like I know racing has, uh, I suppose, a favorable funding project from the the government and all that. Like, but like there is no there is nothing there for the likes of say sh- show jumping that I could find anyway, or mm-hmm. eventing or dressage or anything like that. Like, so I says if these professionals this amount of professionals that are suffering like what in god's name like what what in god's name sort of an amount is of the amateurs like say like yeah. the show jumpers or uh, like anyone that's just sort of trying to do this as a hobby like what are they going through and like what are they suffering as a result of it like and um i i i just said uh, i just came up with this campaign that the fact that i felt a bit lonely and felt that like uh, I, someone to talk to was all I really needed and next thing how Aria came into my head and I just says right how are we going to tie this in and next thing fingers take to the penny dropped and hey came into my head hey being the first letter of each word how are you yeah uh, that's that's basically the idea I pitched to Shane McCarthy and he says I love the concept I absolutely love the concept we're going to run with this now and we're going to really come 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 at this from all from all guns blazing and um thank god he did because Jesus Christ like it's been an absolutely unbelievable month and like yeah. I know I know there's been some of the writers there that have had their projects put on hold and everything else like that like I mean for that I, I I genuinely am sorry and I I I know like <laughs> funny 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 we should mention that like it was it was me that won the the award for most articles pulled from the Grand <laughs> Gazette. So like I know I know what's like when like it is something just is either put on hold or doesn't make the cut like but mm. um I'm I'm glad the fact that so many people like especially the ones that have had these projects been planned an awful lot more uh, an awful lot longer than I had um got behind the campaign so well and really played a massive massive part in in the success and the the growth of this this whole project yeah I think I think everyone understood that like you know this was a big thing like so I don't think there yeah. were, I, I I imagine like yeah. there's no animosity towards yeah. it um and I think everyone would do it again if it happened yeah. but I think as well the fact that you did it in January was like such a perfect time especially for yeah. anyone who works in agriculture or horses like people like people who are like giving out to you about your horses they don't understand the hours you spend in yeah. the cold shoveling shite and yeah yeah like... that's it that's it and um like 
we were we were chatting myself and Shane McCarthy were chat we were chatting John Fitzgerald there one day, um, and he was like, yeah, timed it absolutely perfectly. He says if he did this six months ago, it wouldn't have worked. Mm. If he did it like a year ago, it wouldn't have worked. Eighteen months ago, we were still in COVID, like, or I yeah. think we were anyway. Um. And it definitely wouldn't have fucking worked then, like because <laughs> there was there was other things going on. But you're looking, um, yeah, like it, it just it. I I don't honestly know how it came into my head, but like, I'm so glad it did because it's it's after opening, it's after opening up plenty like so many friendships as well. Like like there's people that have c- came to me. Um, on the back of this, and have just opened up about their whole, their whole scenario and their whole life, mm. and like what's what's going on behind the scenes and behind, behind the, the the screen and the Instagrams and the TikToks and Twitters and whatever, <laughs> um, like people don't realize they're that what you see is not essentially what you get, um, yeah. and like I I was. I, it's not that I was shocked to the sense that like these people could never suffer, but like they're the last people that you think would be suffering. Mm. Um, and that's like I'm so glad to the people. I'm not and I for for respect to themselves, I'm not going to name them, but they know who mm. they are. Um, and I could not be more proud of the way they like the bravery they showed just to be able to open up like like they only met me they only met me once or twice like maybe at like the races or the awards night there in 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 november last but like it's just it's mad how how impactful this has been like do you know like people would be like oh jesus how are you and how are you like you need to meet them on the street like and people would think nothing of it but like I think we're after changing the meaning behind those three words. Mm. Um, and like for something so simple, I it's it seems like it's it's sort of magical, you know. Yeah. Like, it, it just seems like that it 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 just seems like it's too good to be true. But I get you. Yeah. But do you think do you think as well like it like I know you can always talk to someone and you probably know people you can always talk to. Yeah. But you've, in a sense, opened open that dialogue and you have had people literally just like broadcast on their social media. If you want to talk, you can talk to me, which is giving people who are struggling that invite. That's why yeah. people who are coming and talking to you. Maybe they're talking to you because they don't know you. And yeah. they think like you're not going to judge yeah. them, like their mom, their dad, their sister, their brother, their cousins, mates. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's 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 I suppose that's that's another way of looking at it as well. Mm-hmm. Like, but like I've always I've always been, I don't know whether it's blessed or cursed, but <laughs> I've always, I've always, I, I'll, I'll say I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm I've always been blessed with, li- with a listening ear, and mm. like I'd always listen to someone's problems, and I always try and not necessarily give them advice, but give them a friendly sort of push in the right direction. And, yeah. Um, like that's that's the way I've always sort of been, and it's the way. Like granted, like granted is great. Like he's he's going on a hundred and two now in another couple of months. But like he's always he's always said to me, he's like treat everyone like you would like to be treated. Like and yeah. like there's plenty of plenty of time for crack and everything else like that. Like but like if you respect and if you be honest and open to to different people, like that's the it's the best way to live a, a happy and help a, a happy and healthy life. <laughs> do you find yourself like if you like say for instance you said you're always been great for listening to people but you say because of that you have kind of kept in your own things and you haven't talked to other people oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 for years Chrissy like it, I I don't think I properly opened up to someone until after Grant's pass and that was like like I, I've I've had I've been carrying things since I was maybe about six or seven. Mm. And it was going from there on up until oh uh, what? About twenty two. So you could say the guts of seventeen, eighteen years yeah. <laughs> carrying carrying Jeez. different burdens, like yeah. Like it is like 
people people laughs and says to me, This is I'd love to see what goes on inside your head. I says, Oh by fuck you would not I says <laughs> <laughs> But like yeah, no, it's um it's just it's just the reality of it. Like the like I've like I was always bullied as as a kid in school and I was always sort of the outcast and the outsider and mm. like it, it just carried on and carried on and like different little shitty things like that you just sort of bottle up and bottle up and leave fester and next thing all of a sudden you have a fucking mental breakdown you know it's just it's one of those like it's just one of those things and like the fact that I've I've listened now there's some there's a couple of people that I have genuinely opened up to and told them so much um, and I suppose since writing these particular articles about opening up about mental health and open up about my own stories as well it's um it's definitely helped me sort of i suppose loosen lo- loosen the the fuse and uh just sort of let let a few things off my mind um but like yeah no for for years chrissy i was i was bottling and bottling and bottling and next and all of a sudden it just fucking went <laughs> went mad but yeah. like that that's what happens and like i i learned that i learned that the hard way and for like a brief period of my life i was sort of delirious and i was doing things that like doing things that i really shouldn't and like thinking things i really shouldn't mm-hmm. but like it was like i was living a different it was like I was living in an outer body experience. Like I didn't think that I was doing these things and I didn't think that I was, you know, thinking, thinking the way I was. But when I look back at it now, like I, I, I realized like what I was doing was very, very dangerous. And like the way I was thinking was um, completely false. And like just trying to like, basically like after, after Grant's pants, after Grant's passing, I spent, about two or three months on suicide watch and yeah. ended up ended up going for therapy then and went on antidepressants and look at where where we are where we are today. Um now thankfully I've gone past the uh, the whole suicide watch phase. But like there is days. There is days where I'd I'd feel worthless and I'd feel you know feel sort of run down and you know I'd be very hard on myself as well. That's the mm. that's the other thing. Like I, I I am a bit of a perfectionist. Like the fact that I came from chef and is one of the fucking is one of the worst ca- cases for that. Because so like, you're doing like, chefing. Yeah. No, oh good Jesus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched you call it I, I worked as a chef for oh about seven or eight years. And yeah, like that 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 is <laughs> it's either all or nothing it has to be mm. perfect, you know. And that I suppose I'm still sort of wired that way as well. And like that's another reason as well. Like I do be very, very hard on myself. Like if things don't don't go the way I'd like them to go, or if like if I was to say fail an exam or like if I was to, you know, do something do something I shouldn't like in work or in general life or something along the lines like that, like I beat myself up and I beat myself up about it, like. But yeah, yeah. Like, now I'm another another thing as well. Like I'm sort of gone. I'm I'm not completely gone, but I'm 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 less of that sort of person now than mm. was maybe about I'd say maybe about six or eight months ago now. Um, yeah. Like Jesus, before, before, like it was it was just it was crazy the way it was going on, and like people probably didn't realize what what way I was sort of viewing myself and what way I was, I suppose, going about handling different challenges and all that, like, but sure, it was all completely negative. But, like, now that I'm after going through this month and I'm after seeing the the right way to do things and the right way to go about life, it's uh, it's definitely put a, a massive, massive new perspective on, on the mm-hmm. cards. And it's it's going forward. It's it, Look at it. It's going to be tough, but... It's it's a good building block for, I suppose, building a new sense of life. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. Like, as you're saying, like, you still have bad days, but that's just being human as well. Like, you know, yeah. um, 
it's like as Brendan said it's okay to not be okay you just yeah. have to stay that yeah. way yeah um, that's it that's it and even if you're having a a day that's not optimal I suppose you can kind of look at it and go well that's just today things will move yeah. on um yeah. I'd be like I'd be like yourself I'm terrible for negative thoughts and I'm trying to openly catch myself all the time now when I give out to something I'm like no yeah. no that's not it um yeah. and it's really hard it's it's a, like once you've been in that habit for so long it's very hard yeah. to break it yeah and that's it and like especially <laughs> especially going um going from chef to the horses as well like a funny story I'll have to tell you um like when I first started going to when I first started going to say for counseling and whatever uh, and the, <laughs> your man your man asked me he says what do you do I says well I was a chef and he's um I says I'm, I'm getting out of it now I says I need to try and find something else he says what uh what what are you thinking what are you looking for and of course he was probably thinking that I wanted ah, something handy and something simple I says that ah. I says anything got to do with horses now and he and he says oh fuck he says going from going from the fryer into the frying pan he yeah. says. <laughs> <laughs> oh but look at like I wouldn't have it any other way like I since I suppose since getting Cheerio Sweetie like it's been it's been a therapeutic mm. it's, it's it's more therapeutic than anything else like because like I just have that I just make that connection with with, with horses yeah and like it's like it's like a friend away from a friend no I understand I think like that's what I was saying you know someone giving out to you about the the being involved in racing and stuff like that you yeah. know it's, horses when people horses they're not like the 99 percent of people it's like they're not just a commodity to us they are no. like our friends our partners we spend yeah like we build bonds with them like myself like I have my own horse um you now he's only a little cob but like We've had him nearly fifteen years, and yeah. it just so happened it's a life, in it's, January it's a, he, he injured himself, and I'm like, what yeah. do I do now? <laughs> yeah, but like it's it's the fact that there's the the like providing they they live a safe and happy life mm. for years and years and years, yeah. and like it's a lifetime, like you know. Yeah. So like, of course, like of course you get attached to them, and of course you get attached to like every the the place that I'm in now in Tinnakill like Dermot Cantle and he has about maybe 100 to 150 mares mm. or 100 and 150 horses whatever amount like he's a massive massive amount um, but he can tell you every little like he can he, he can tell a story about every single one of them and like he says to me he says Shane he says every horse and every mare or every like whatever sort of a a breed of a horse it is every single one has their own story to tell mm. and like that really that really sunk in and that really you know it's it's all well and good say go and say you know that that horse is mad or that horse is this or that or whatever like that like and other people looking in like saying oh jesus they're they have more money than they know what to do with like and they're mm-hmm. buying horses and they could have maybe a oh, hundred horses out or whatever like that like but like jesus christ like buying it buying a horse and buying a race horse in particular like you lose about 80 percent of your money overnight like that's the, that's the way it goes and like it's just it's like it, it's something that like i think you can you can agree with me on this christy like you you do you look after them more so than you look after yourselves. Yeah. And like, I think that's where, that's where so many have fallen behind. Um, Like they focus so much on their horses and their, their horses health that yeah. they haven't necessarily took the time to look after themselves. Um, and in like, it's about, life. in all parts of their life, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Like, and it's just, it's the way it is. And, it's it's just something that like we we decided that needed to be changed and mm-hmm. like um that this this was the best way to go about it but like if you told me like if you told me now say like a month ago that this would have gotten gotten to where it has today like i'd say no nah, no nah, not a chance not a chance there's like i i would have been happy if we had one person 
that that's the way that's the way I am and that's the way I'm wired. But like every single day, I was seeing multiple, multiple, multiple stories. Like I remember, I was on my on the phone to my mother there one night in particular down when I was in Kildalton and mm. phone call lasted about seven and a half minutes. I <laughs> I logged into the hay campaign like I was only after I was only after logging out of it there just before I rang my mother, but logged back in and there was like 13 messages and like 74 notifications in Jeez. seven and a half minutes. Yeah. No, it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely mental. I like the video like, you, you put out on Hay Monday as well. Didn't that have like near 50k views? Yeah, in a couple yeah. hours, like nearly, nearly immediately, yeah, like yeah, it, was, it just exploded. Ah, uh, yeah, no, and like even I, I still look back at that, like, and I still, I still get very emotional over it because, like, an awful lot of these people are my heroes, and like the mm. the first two people, like Rachel Blackmore and AP McKay, like the two of them are probably the best of their own generations, um. And then it goes into Danny Mullins then as well, and next thing into Shark Handling and Willie Mullins and all the other like all the other sector sectors all congregate together as well for the same video as well. But like I I'd I'd know more so the racing end of things than I would say for like show jumping or like dressage. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have a I wouldn't have a clue about dressage or like event and like that, like but like give me racing and like I I I'd be able to nearly nearly name. <laughs> I'd say I'd I'd give it a good go and name and nearly everyone in the country that's doing it. Like you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm a little bit like the opposite, but even with that video, looking at it, I was like, I know all these people. Like these are yeah. big names, you know. If oh I yeah. Know them, you know. Yeah, and that's it. And like it's um. Yeah, it's 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 still in a sense sort of surreal, but I'm I'm starting to I suppose come to terms with it now, but. Um, like even even that day in in Fairy House, like yeah, when you we were, were there, on like, like cloud nine. You uh, were you went up for it. Yeah, you didn't know what like, doing. took photos of me that I didn't realize she did, and <laughs> like there's ones there, and I'm just looking up at the screen like this, and oh Jesus, uh, like you nearly swear there was an apparition coming up as what there was. <laughs> you nearly swear the Virgin Mary was coming over the hill there very <laughs> But, yeah, like, it's just, um, oh, like, I I can't, I can't put it into words, like, how, yeah. like, how amazing it's been. Um, like, it's, Where's it's, next for it now? Oh, look at, like, I'm half thinking about setting up a podcast, um, trying to get that sort of organized and how we're going to go about it but um hoping to get like hoping to have it sort of like teamed around like a friendly chat over a cup of tea or something along the lines like that like and just talk about life and life in general and like how different people overcome the hard parts of life and I suppose prosper to what they are today that's sort of a really good idea that's sort of the the idea that's sort of coming into my head now there's other parts as well where we're sort of half thinking about like looking down the lines of like a magazine or something like that um okay. like so, something similar to the grassroots gazette but i doubt shane mccarty wants to do, wants to do any more magazines six like magazine the maybe six yeah, magazine oh, oh, jesus christ <laughs> you wouldn't know where to go but um I definitely like to target the agricultural shows, uh, the like the big agricultural shows over the, over the next year. Um, if we could get a stand there and, just I suppose, like like what we've been doing there in Fairy House, and yeah, Leperstown and different things like that. Just get the word out and get. This year is going to be basically a year for, I suppose, advertising. If that makes any sense, and if we can get a fundraiser set up as well to be able to, oh, you cool. know, like that's, that's what, that's, that's probably the biggest goal I have now for the rest of the year, like to have some sort of a fundraiser mm. or a fundraising campaign. Um, and then once January 1st comes in of 2024, we'll be ready to strike and we'll be ready to, we'll be ready to really provide a good mental health service for, 
the equine, the ag, if if we're lucky enough to get get the the sponsorship or whatever. Um, but it's all just about planning and like how we're going to be as impactful in twenty twenty four as we possibly can. And people are saying I'm probably saying I'm mad that I'm planning this so far in, but I want to be ready by twenty twenty four to really take over the world. Young start planned on twenty the twenty seventh of December this year. <laughs> no, no. And that's that's why that's one of the mistakes I made. Um yeah, it's one of the biggest mistakes I made with this whole campaign. But yeah, no, it's um it's going to be well thought and well when well planned out. And there's a good team and a good solid team of maybe about five or six people there that we're all sort of working in conjunction for the one goal and I'm very, very confident that 2024 we are going to be very, very big and uh, like a very impactful organization. Yeah, I fully believe that too as well. Um, I don't doubt it for a second. I think now that is pretty much everything I have to ask you. But okay, you are going to have to tell everyone where we can find the help hey campaign, how they can follow you, what they can do to get involved. Yeah, all those bits before we go. Yeah. Well, okay, so we have a Facebook page. We have a TikTok page at Hey Campaign. Um, the Facebook is just the, the Hey How Are You campaign. Mm -hmm. The Twitter is at Hey underscore campaign. And the Instagram is Hey dot campaign. Um, <laughs> I try to have them all like with the one <laughs> with the one username but yeah. trying to find that now is like trying to find a needle in a haystack but um boom boom nice joke I love it <laughs> but yeah no it's um that that's basically where you'll, you'll find us and like if if we have the the podcast up and running now next make sure to just keep an eye for it and uh Hopefully that we'll be able to go target all the major say podcasting platforms and look at if if we're lucky enough to be able to monetize it then and to help start kick kickstart the campaign for I suppose getting in a mental health project or something something there just for just to be able to add a little bit of extra support um for either the equine or the agriculture or whatever whatever industries that we decided it needs we'll it go most. With both. You we'll know go with go both, both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go go big or go home. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're targeting it. them all. They're all getting it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Eventually they will anyway, but uh, if we need to prioritize it'll be probably equine first and the agriculture then after. Um that's just that's just the way that I sort of envisage it. The fact that the majority of the, the people getting behind it so far are equines is a sign to me that that's where the money needs to go money needs to go first if we do if we are lucky enough to raise a bit of money um but i will be i will be looking into getting the agriculture scene involved as well yeah definitely for sure yeah i think it's i suppose in a sense it's kind of harder to get the agricultural because like say for instance like with the equestrian you can go specifically target racing show jumping yeah. dressage but like what do you target when you're going to the agro size do you go it, yeah, it's probably I suppose the local Chagas office or mm. some like, like yeah, it's just it's even like Macron and the farmer like the young farmers like that's probably the best option to go if we are going um and that's yeah it's probably it's probably the place that I will be I will be sort of targeting because like the look it's all it's all realistically the young farmers and the young yeah. like equine people that are like tend to be i suppose the more vocal about the whole lot the whole yeah. lot of this and um it's it's great to see in a sense but like if we really want to get impact and everything else like that like we need to get these people on board and to get them like not necessarily reading off a script but to be able to know what to say like to someone that's showing signs that they're not totally themselves or they might be they might be suicidal like i completed a. Uh, I completed a suicide uh, awareness course in the, in the space of about 20 minutes there a couple of weeks ago called ohana.ie. Mm -hmm. I think it's ohana.ie or ohana.com. Look up ohana anyway. Um, 
very very impactful and if anyone I'd rather I'd rather send people towards that than I would say for like the likes of the hay campaign or anything like that like because that is realistically more important than say you know more followers or different things like that like yeah is, I get like, you yeah we want to we want to try and save as many lives as we possibly can well that's it like so, and I think it. I it is just a start and you definitely will will do that you know yeah yeah well look with the help of god anyway that's that's the end goal that's the yeah. end goal if we can completely flatten the curve in the mental health sector that's that that would be that would be job complete i'd be able to die a happy man then. <laughs> <laughs> until then we start getting it low <laughs> that's it that's it that's it um yeah great so um i'll just say for everyone as well who if there anyone's looking to follow me you'll find me uh my horse uh instagram and tiktok is at strong in the saddle underscore on instagram and at strong in the saddle without the underscore and tiktok because i ran into the same problem as you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my website is uh chrissyhawkins.com so just want to say thanks again for joining us shane it was absolutely brilliant to talk to you about all this Asher, always a pleasure, Chrissy. Always a pleasure. <laughs> I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening. Mm-hmm.